to another edition of GRS Let's Talk Tax. I'm Anita Huburn. As you know, we say it every week, we are pleased that you join us because we intend on this program to ensure that you get the sort of information you need so that you can navigate uh, the country's tax systems and its custom systems and all of that uh, efficiently and it doesn't, you know, you don't get frustrated during the process. Um, it's coming up to the Christmas season, so many of us will be leaving Guyana, some of us will be, many of us will be coming home. And so in a very short while, the Chetty Jagan International Airport is going to become a very, very busy hub in another two weeks or three weeks or so, because I'm sure for those of you um, looking talking, you, you know, you're watching the program, sorry, you might be talking back to me to say, yes, your auntie's coming in, your grandmother's coming home, your brother who you haven't seen in, in years is probably coming home for after a very long time, wanting to see the transformation, the George, uh, the Garden City is undergoing at the moment. So um, we're quite excited already about Christmas. And, and so we thought in this week's program, we want to help you to navigate the Chetty Jagan International Airport, especially if it's your first time leaving, you might be a little bit worried and you have to travel by yourself. Or for those of you who have relatives coming home after a long time, it's important that you give them the information they need so they can do their tax, uh, their declarations and so on. Joining me this week on our program, we have Errol Charles, who is the manager for customs. And he's joined by C uh, Sion Brown, who is the group leader for customs. And they're both at the Chetty Jagan International Airport. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Very much. All right, Errol, I'm going to start with you really quick. Tell us about the role of customs at the Chetty Jagan International Airport. Well, we have a very big role at, at Chetty Jagan International Airport. We look after incoming passengers, that somebody would come, we would process the baggage. We also, we also take care of outgoing passengers also, if they have currency to declare. Also, our role is sort of extended because cargo normally would come at Chetty Jagan Air, International Airport and there are three bonds, mainly La Parkin, Camex, and the Amerijet bond, mm -hmm. which cargo would come on once or twice per, per week. So we customs officers are involved in all those rules at the Chetty Jagan International Airport. All right, so you, you have to, so in addition to dealing with passengers, you have to also clear stuff. That's correct. And are, are there big items or do you have boxes or what are the items? What are the they, are, they are small and they are big. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Because some of the items are pretty small like documents and things and some of them are quite large for companies who would require items for emergency purpose. And 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 Sion, sorry, not Sean, Sion. That sort of clearing is the same thing that happens in Georgetown, even though you're all the way. It's the same sort of requirements. Yes, the same system followed. Okay, the same system is followed. Now, um, you guys are there because we have flights coming in at all hours through the airport. We leave at two in the morning. We come at ten. We are there at seven, ten during the day, six. Are you always on? So there are basically two shifts, mm -hmm. twelve hour shifts, seven to seven. Okay. Or you may say seven hours to nineteen hours, and from nineteen hours to seven hours in a month. So you have two sets, and, and what? How big is your is your group that that works? Currently, we are operating around seven officers per shift. Per shift. Yeah, excluding the group leader. And that's you. Yeah. All right. What's your role as group leader? What do you have to do? Well, as group leader, as raise the cargo, uh, whenever a customer or a passenger comes to clear cargo, they first have to come to the group leader will give an okay for the goods to be examined before you pay your taxes. Okay. So the group leader is the person that makes the assessment and send you back to the officer to calculate the taxes. Oh, so, so you, you, that's, that's a big role. Because I think from time to time when you read in the papers of some you know, instances of issues popping up at the airport, you hear about someone that they have to go to. Yeah. So generally that's you? Yeah. Okay. Um, in addition to that, um, as it relates to incoming or outgoing declaration of currency, it's a group, group leader's responsibility to take the declaration. And when you say take the declaration, you mean you, that's you? It's a form that you have to fill out, mm -hmm. which some information that you have to, your passport number, the name of the passenger, mm -hmm. your address, and the amount of currency you're declaring, and right. the denominations. That they're in? Yeah. All right. Let's get to this issue of declarations, because that's very important. We're going to start with when we're leaving, because when we're, when we're coming in, there's a, a lot more stuff that we want to talk, we, we can talk about. But when I'm leaving Guyana, for someone who is perhaps watching our program for the first time, has never traveled, okay. this might be the first opportunity they have to, to travel to any country. Um, they have to fill those forms out. They also have to do things like get their tax, that uh, departure tax, they have to pay it. Correct. And they have to ensure they have their passports and so on. Walk us through the role of customs. And, and Errol, I'm going to come to you. Yeah. For someone who is, who is leaving Guyana for the first time, how, what's their interaction with customs? 
Their interaction with customs is that we come in basically when there is a declaration to be made as it relates to currency exceeding 10,000 US dollars. Um, outgoing, you will find there are a lot of narcotics and things like that might be going out. That specifically comes on the road of Kanu and the narcotics branch. So there, there is a presence of customs, but we are not very, very, you can't visibly see us. When it comes to declaring money that you go out of the country, then you will see us. You will indicate on the, you will tell us that, they will tell sometimes when they go to the scanner, they will tell, they will indicate to the person, look, I'm, I'm having over $10,000 US or equivalent. If you have currency, say Barbadian dollars, and you're going over the $10,000 limit, as in US, not in Barbadian dollars, mm -hmm. we use US currency as the benchmark, you will have to tell us, we'll take you into a room, ensure that you're private, take the declaration, and then you, you will go on. So when I come though, when, if I am saying I'm taking out that amount of money, mm. I don't have to tell you what I'm going to do with my money or anything. I just have to say, look, I have this amount of money on me. You have to indicate that on the form, um, you have to indicate the source of your funds and oh. your intended use. So you have to say where I got the money where from. Where you got your notes from and your intended use for. Okay, so if I say, look, I, you know, I've been saving up all these monies for all these years. Everybody's sending me a small piece every time. Do you take that as an answer or do I have to be a bit more specific and say I got it from a bank or so? The notes per se. So, for instance, um, if you went to a cambio, mm -hmm. you have to indicate the name of the cambio and the, license, the receipt number that you purchased the notes from is right. also have to be indicated by the officer, which should be the group leader, on the form. Sian, I am going, you're going to have to indulge me for a bit. What if I saved up all this money? And I have no way of saying, look, I went, I didn't go to the camp, I just said I had this money Okay, all the time. In, in that case, you just put probably life savings, mm -hmm. and as the officer, you just put a notation in the back that passenger indicated that They've this been is saving this. Yeah. Okay, but so you're not going to arrest me or anything? No, no, no. no. This doesn't happen. Okay. No. Are there instances, though, when someone doesn't declare the already their you figure that something might be wrong with this declaration they're making. Is that part of your job that you can you can sort of? There are a few instances where um, there have been arrests being made in regards to currency declaration. As more people that are concealing the money are not willing to declare. Declare the money. it. But once you're declaring the money, um, at the end of the month we do a report and send it to the finance department mm -hmm. which will do their investigation okay Errol, i noticed you wanted to say something at, during that time you yes you see the thing about it as it relates to someone saying where they get the money from it's other agencies have to have to investigate and actually derive if, if what you're saying is true it's true mm -hmm. because you don't want to hassle someone and circumvent the process of not declaring the money. You need them to declare the money. Mm -hmm. So the investigation will follow after. after. All right. How do I, but when, um, I'm just curious now, you talked about people not declaring or they have the money. How do you know, I mean, I'm going to ask you, you know, if I don't want to tell you, or I just got all this money, is it going to show up in the scanner? Or? Yeah, the scanner, yeah. that's the main. It shows up in the scanner. Yeah, it shows up in the scanner. I know the Ghana Revenue Authority spent a lot and a lot of training and so on in that scanner, so it's turned out to be very important to the job of the customs yeah. department. Yes? All right. So, um, so now you know, if you're going to leave Ghana and you have $10,000 US, you have to declare it. If you have $9,999.99, do I still have to declare it? No. No. If you're one cent short of 10,000 US, you don't declare it. No, no. That's interesting. All right. So you don't have to declare it if you've got $9,999.99. But if you have that extra cent, just that one more, you're going to have to tell them that you have this money on you and where you got it from. Okay. So we heard that it's not a difficult process. Uh, they're not going to hassle you. It's not something for you to be scared of. There's also the little bit with the scanner. Is that your job or is that can that does the scanning when we go to the when we go to um, we check in we call we check in and then we have to go to the scanner to get our suitcases either cling wrapped or we just want to send it through that's, is that your no that's controlled by can so that's controlled by can yeah. so that's not you all right but just so you know when you get to the airport and you do your check-in your suitcases are there and like I said you might want to I'm not sure um, if I said this earlier but you might want to protect your duck curry and so that you're taking over and your fish and so on all the fried fish and the shrimp and hassa and so okay so if you're taking all of that and black cake because if you're going for Christmas you want to take your cake you might want to ask them to cling wrap your suitcase it's is that a safety measure we do it because we think we're safer when you do it like that is it safer 
Does it sort of protect you a little bit more? Probably, but um, at the end of the day, the suitcase must be scanned and string wrapping the suitcase doesn't prevent you from scanning the suitcase. You still have to scan? Still have to. But what, one interjection is if that you wrap the, the suitcase and it goes through the scanner, and for some reason, the narcotics individual says to open back the suitcase, mm -hmm. they will wrap it back for free. Oh, they wrap it back for free. So you don't have a problem with that. It's a thousand now, I think, or is it two thousand? I'm not sure what it is at the moment. I think it's about two thousand. Two thousand dollars to clean wrap your yeah. suitcases. All right. So, but if you if you get pulled, there's also that random selection as well that can happen, right? Because your yeah. your back can go through, and then you will be you'll hear your name being announced over the loudspeakers. You're asked to contact. You know, you have to step out of the line. Most times they will say that, and they will come to you with your suitcase, and they might do a random check mm -hmm. of your suitcase. Again, this is, these are completely allowable under laws and their legal searches, and um, it's just a random thing that happens at the Ghana, at uh, the Chetty Chagan International Airport. Now, let's come to passenger inspections, and this, of course, has to do with when we are coming into Guyana. Coming into Guyana, it's quite an interesting experience. We always stand up on the plane as soon as the man says, you know, it doesn't say anything yet about standing, the light's not off, and we stand up and we don't move and we start taking our bags down. Have you had that happen? Have you seen that happen? Yeah, I don't yeah. think it happens in any other plane except in Guyana. Uh, yeah, I see that happen That's quite it. quite a lot. But coming to Guyana, right? Yeah, I, guess, I guess it's the excitement of getting home. I hope. Probably, I don't know. We'll see. Or it, ha it might have something to do with these lanes okay. that we have, to, um, okay. we have to come through. Tell me a little bit about the lanes that we deal with when we come to the airport. Sion? Well, basically, um, we have the scanner, mm -hmm. which is not into the clear lane. And we have a diplomatic lane, mm -hmm. and we have the red lane, right, which can be referred to as for, for secondary examination, meaning that when the passenger comes through the scanner, mm -hmm. once the officer is not clear of something that is on a monitor, they will refer the passenger to a secondary examination, which is the red lane, to examine the contents of the suitcase to see what is there. Is the, I have to ask you though, is the scanner, do you always scan or? Is that what happens every time? You that was, that's a normal procedure, okay, yeah. Right. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Unless you're a diplomat. You're not going to have your bags scanned. You're not but every other passenger, yeah. you're subject. What, 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 what I'm saying yeah. is that behind the form, behind the C-14 form, that's the form you come in with, mm -hmm. you have five questions that you would normally answer to. That relates to the, if you have any planned products. Got I you. think if you have any ammunition, mm -hmm. if you have any narcotics, or things like that, mm -hmm. if you have currency, currency in excess of $10,000. And I think if you bring in fruits and vegetables. Right, yeah. well, that's the same yeah. thing with yeah. plant products, yeah. fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Now, in that case, the officer, they, they, we would normally have an officer on the line. Mm -hmm. We would be running the line. They would ask you for your form and they would look at it. In some cases, the passenger, sometimes they do not fill the back of their forms, in which we implore our passengers to turn on the reverse side of the form, answer the questions correctly, and then you would initial it at the bottom. That actually delays the process a bit because the officer would have to stand at the count and tell you, look, you have to fill out the questions and then initial the form. Based on the questions, the officer on the line would actually direct the passengers where to go. If you have plant and fruits and things like that, we will go into your suitcase, we will ensure that you have it, and then we refer you to plant quarantine section and they'll look at it mm. and they'll stamp the back of your C14 and then you are allowed to go. Okay, so I didn't know that happened. So if I'm bringing plants in, you will, you will actually send me to a quarantine section? Cool. Yeah, there's a quarantine officer okay. always there. So what does he do, he or she? What do they do? Do they take the thing and say, well, this thing is allowed, or, or how does that work? I'm, I'm not too sure of the, how they, what but their someone, system. Yeah, there's but someone there from the department there. who okay. will look into that. So if you're going to bring plants in, you're going away and you see really pretty flowers and you want to bring them in, Remember, you have to fill the form out. It's important. You get the form on the plane. So you have a lot of time, if you're coming from um, JFK and so on, you have a long time to fiddle around and play, know, your, know what your flight number is and so on, where you're going to stay. You know what I found recently, I think? Um, that little bit that says where, we, where we're going to stay, um, if you live here or where you're going to stay, sometimes that can be a little bit um, confusing on the form, especially if you're coming in. Right. So can you guide us through that? When there's a little bit on the form which says um, your intended address, your, I think it says port, port of entry or, okay. or so on, which can get people a little bit confused. Right. So when we're coming in, what do we need to say on the form about where are we going to stay or where we're not staying? Where you're gonna stay is actually the address that you're going to. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it might be a hotel. It might be a residence of someone. You just indicated on, on, on that. I mean, when you look at the form, you will, you will, you will realize that some people is a, is a residence for Guyana or the Guyanese or the Americans. Mm -hmm. Based on that, you can actually look at the address and actually figure out where what's they're going what. To, what's right, what. Right. So yeah. it's important that you get all of that information. You need to know if you're going to go stay at a hotel. You need to know um, which hotel it is so you can put that information down. Do you use this information, though? I'm just, again, curious. When we put all this information down there, do you use it? And if you do, in what, under what circumstances would you use that information? Yeah, we would use the information based on, suppose um, the person is a person of interest to law enforcement mm -hmm. and um, they need to know the person we are about. The information where you want to stay might not be totally correct, but as it relates to the other information as your date of birth, your passport number, mm -hmm. that would have to match with your passport. Okay. I also forget to mention to you also that we actually give driver's permit at Timiri also. So, so right there from coming in? Yeah, when you're I coming can, in and, uh -huh. you, and you want a driver's permit, it's valid for a month, so you can actually go and get a driver's permit as long as you have an overseas permit that is current. We that don't want you, you bring any expired overseas permit and give it to us. We'll issue it. It, it, it doesn't take very long. And you can, you can go and drive in Guyana. Now, that's a fantastic bit of information. For those of you at home, I know you have relatives coming home, and some of them, they want to drive. They always ask, can I drive when I come here? So you've got a car. You don't want to deal with the crazy traffic. You want to give them a chance to explore Guyana. Just let them know once they have an active uh, permit or, or they have their license that's active and it's, um, it's uh, enforced in the U.S., so then once they get to the CGIA, CGIA, they can actually get it done. How long Is it a long process? No. It's not a long process. No. And what do you give them? You just give them a pass and they can... Yeah, we give them a pass. The pass of everything, we, most of the information as, as it relates to your name, mm -hmm. your local address, as in your local address. Where are you staying? Right. We actually put on your expiry date. When it's going to expire, we actually put your date of issue. Mm -hmm. And we, we say what you are allowed to drive. Oh, you can also say that. All right. And, and the officer will normally endorse it, stamp it and give it to the individual. So you can use that if, if you're stopped by a traffic cop on the road, you can actually say, look, I've Here, got, I no. have this. Right. All right. So that's a fantastic bit of information. I hope you, you took that down so you can tell your relatives and your friends, they're coming home. Listen, when you get here, you actually can drive and you can get your driver's permit right at the airport and it's not a very long system. Now I'm looking at a time we have just about 10 minutes or so left of program time for this week. If you're just uh, now joining us we are chatting with uh, Errol Charles and Sion Brown. Errol is the manager and Sion the group leader for customs at the Chetty Jagan International Airport and we know that it's coming up to Christmas time so things are going to get a little bit hectic and they thought you know it's a good time to remind all our travelers you know what are the things you need to know? What are the things you need to remember when you have to navigate the airport? It's not a very big airport, but you know, you can get a little bit scared, especially if it's your first time. I want to come now though to challenges you have with passengers on both sides, whether it's, um, well, not just, we're not just going to look at passengers, but you also have the, the bond area. So perhaps you can talk to us about the challenges you have. What are the things, the problems you see popping up? Um, Sion, maybe I can start with you and then I'm going to go to Errol. But what are the things you see coming over and over and passengers don't seem to get? Probably, firstly, the completion of the customs declaration mm -hmm. form. Every single, every flight, passengers, you'll find a percentage of, a percentage of passengers don't complete the back, the reverse of the form, which is for custom purpose. They're just concentrating on completing the front of the form, which is for immigration purpose. Do you think and you should put a bigger sign that says, please turn over? It's written there, though. It's, it's little, written, it's yeah, there. and the form is... But what's their excuse? What do they say when they, they don't understand it? They don't understand. They don't, they're not told. They were not told, so... Oh, yeah. all right. Um, one of the things you might know, you, I want to ask you quickly, what are the things we can actually bring into the country? I just want to ask you that um, as an aside. Sometimes we want to bring in a big TV, we want to bring in a coffee maker, we want to bring in a big computer or a laptop. These are all new things. They're not like, they're, they're not part of my, you know, my own things. These are things I'm probably bringing for relatives and so on. Errol, you want to tell me about any one of you? Tell me, how does this work? Do I have to pay duty on it? Are you going to, you know, pull me in for questioning? How is that working? No, well, we, we, we normally, you have to pay duty on it. Like, if you're going to bring a big TV into the country, you'll have to pay duty on it. We know computers are generally free. So if you're going to bring one computer, 
you, you're going to pass. It's, it's, it's a free item. So you won't have a problem with, with a customs official. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems we have with individuals is that when you tell them to fill the form, they somehow feel offended when you tell them, look, you have to fill the form. Oh. I don't, I don't understand the reason or the rationale, but if they go to the United States and an officer indicates to them that they have to fill the form, they have to fill the form. Any other country they will. Right. But what we're trying to do, I have spoken to um, the manager of the airport, and there are some representatives who actually represent or trying to make you stay comfortable. You, you would see the girls when you come in there, normally they have a black... Um, they have a black dress and, and, and they, they look very, very nice. They would come to you and say, um, to assist you, um, I'll ask them to actually go to passengers and ask them to fill the forms when they come in because when the flights come in, that, that the language, universal language is not English. These girls are there talking in Spanish to actually help with passengers. So we're trying to make the process easier, easier for everyone. And that's a good thing. I am also, as you were talking about it, I'm trying to work out in my head why we don't fill the forms. They're not difficult. Because right at the back there, it's pretty much one thing you can put. You could put nil, nil, nil. Mm -hmm. Or if you have, like we said, if you have plants in your bags, you have food items, fruits, and this is actually, we're not talking about apples or grapes here, right? Are we talking about simple things like apples or grapes or if you want to bring more exotic fruits? I apples, get. grapes, plants. And anything. You just anything. say, yes, I have this. Yeah. Right. Um, Again, it's not anything that they're, they're not looking to take your stuff away from you. It's just to say, look, I have these things, I'm bringing them in. Can I have those things and not declare them? And will you, you know, and not say, well, I have them? Does that happen? I can fill the form out and say nil, 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 but I have those. Yes, yeah, sometimes the scanner picks it up and we refer it to secondary examination, which is the red lane. All right, so if you're bringing in ice apples and grapes, which you probably don't need to, we have so much of it here in Ghana, but if you are um, bringing it in, then you need to indicate that. If you're bringing in ammunition, um, again, you have to, there are, there are certain things you have to do, but one of the things, if you're bringing ammunition in, whether it's bullets, you bring in, um, you know, a weapon, if you bring in crossbows, all of those things, you have to, um, you have to declare it. So you'll have to take the box that says, yes, I'm ha I, I have this. It's Christmas, you have a lot of relatives and friends, so you're bringing in 10,000 and more US dollars, you have to declare it. It's not that they're gonna take your money from you, they need to know that you're bringing in this amount of money. Am I correct so far? Yeah, yeah All right. sure. Let's make their work easy for them. I, I know that it's going to be, I know in just a few weeks, it's going to be very hectic, and your nerves can get a little bit frazzled, so we wanna make it easy for both you at home watching, if, you use, if you'll be traversing the airport as well as our customs offices. Sion, anything else you have challenges with, um, with, with passengers? Generally, um, when one comes through the, not into the clear lane, which is the scan, and you refer the, the passenger to secondary examination, the red lane, some persons get upset so sometimes you have to diffuse the situation and try to explain to them mm -hmm. that coming through the non clear lane doesn't mean that you're exempted from, from being, being examined. Right. Right? Uh, once there's nothing clear on a monitor and they obviously suspect that you may be carrying something that is of commercial or, or plants or meat or anything that will need the quarantine department mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. check they will send it they to have to, They have to go to it. So that you guys are doing your jobs. Yep. Yes. Um, so now that we have any other challenges, what about with the bonds? Do you have challenges there, Errol? Yeah, you have it's challenges. Um, I think that um, because of the influx of people um, coming on to Christmas, you get a lot of packages. But we deal with it. The, old, the, the, the problem is that we would extend the working hours sometimes because we were, we were 24 hours on a 24 hour basis. So you find that people come and they want their goods right away. But there is a system. There's procedures which you have to adhere to. Taking into account that it's Christmas, a lot of people would want to have their stuff. And we try as much as possible to give everybody the stuff. Mm -hmm. The timing might not be correct, right, but we try at least if you come today, you get your stuff today. So, but that means that they have to also get their things ready as well. They have to get their documents proper right. and all their information. So the, the system works efficiently. Yeah. All right. What are the challenges? Sian, you said you have some orders, did you? Another challenge is that um, most persons coming from Georgetown to clear the person effects at Ati Mary tend to do everything in Georgetown for us and then 
comes up to the Timir International, um, Chelyankin International Airport to clear their cargo box, parts and effects, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. And sometimes it'll be two, three in the afternoon. It's too late. And that's the time when the cashier is about to close. And then they go a little bit crazy. Yeah. All right. So, what's a good time? So what's, what's the time you think we the should earlier, the, the earlier, the better. You come to the airport as early as possible, it will be better. All right. So don't wait until 3 o'clock, especially not 3 o'clock. If you're going to be up there for 3, don't bother to go. Wait until tomorrow. But that's a good point you're making. They try to finish, it, finish everything and they think, yeah. well, I can just cruise up to the airport yeah. and get this thing done. So you want them to come a bit earlier. Yeah. And it's better as well. Um, what are your plans for the Christmas season? Anything different? Anything, any additional staff will be there or your seven-man shift will be enough? I don't think it will be adequate. Um, we'll have to have reinforced staff to okay. deal with the so traffic. You'll have some extra, yeah. extra we people. We normally have staff from, from, from Georgetown because the administration will ask you, um, you need extra staff, and they know that you need extra staff. They'll send extra staff mm -hmm. to Timiri. So Timiri will have extra staff because, remember, at the same time you're dealing with passengers, you'll have to also deal with the bonds, and there are three bonds. And you have to do it simultaneously. Yeah, right. That's mm -hmm. correct. So you find that the counters have to be filled and the bonds also have to be filled also. So they will send up additional staff. All right. Well, we're happy to hear that. And I know that, you 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 know, sometimes we don't think about the work you do, but just thinking about us not filling out those forms. And it's so important because you also have to use those forms um, for information too. So it's important that we fill the forms out. Just do remember. There's a front and a back, and again, um, I'm hoping that you're seeing it on your screens right now. If you need more information, the forms are also available online at GRE's website. The website address is on your screens. Go to the website and see the forms, have a look at it. You can print one off um, as a sample and try and read it up. So if you're traveling or your relatives are coming back home after a long time, you just let them know that these are the little things they need to do so that when they have to clear customs, as they call it, um, they can do it a bit more efficiently and make it easy for, for themselves. It's not a difficult process, I have to tell you that. It's not difficult and it doesn't take a long time. I think the longest thing is waiting for your bags. Yep, definitely. Yes, and then and at Christmas, lots of bags. Yep. All right. Are we still doing just two bags and so on? You, you, do you, I know it's not your responsibility. It's just the, it's the airline that yeah. decides that. But you also have to do with protecting those bags and making sure that they're okay and they get out on time. Right. You know, before I let you go, though, let me just ask you, um, if I don't get my bag on time, let's say I get there and my bag's not there, do I, who do I, within the airport, can I come to right away? Do I talk to your team? Or you do speak I? to the airline representative. Representative, yeah. Whatever airline you travel with, mm -hmm. and they will give you a form that you have to fill out and you return subsequently to collect. They will call you and, or probably deliver it to you. To you. Okay, all yeah. right. So it's not these guys? It's, it's, not a, it's a desk right in the area. I mean, people get carried away with, with the fact that because we examine the bags, we are responsible for the bags. Right, you know. We, we, we are responsible for the examination of the bags. There's nothing to do with when it comes to Guyana. That's, that's strictly an airline responsibility. So when they don't get a bag, they say, custom, I, I didn't get my bag. So I said, we direct them. There's a desk, and it's very conspicuous. You go to the young lady, you say, well, I, um, I lost my bag, and you fill out a form. You say the contents of it, and, mm -hmm. and when they get it, they probably would deliver it to you or they'll tell you to come up to collect your bags. All right. So we're going to make your Christmas nice, and Customs is doing all they can to ensure that your experience at the Chetty Jagan International Airport, whether you're going or coming, is a positive one. Anything else you'd like to add before we wrap our show for today? Well, I, I would like to say that um, it's very nice being here. It's, it's nice getting all the information to the public, and, and, and we, we hope that it would, it, would, it would serve as a good um, public a public administrative ad to say that, look, when you come to customs, ensure that your forms are properly filled and we'll process you very, very quickly. All right, great. Sion? Yes, so I'd just like to reiterate, um, please complete the reverse of your forms, which is very important. That is for custom purpose and it will be easier for us and you also to exit the area as quickly as possible. You can hear their frustration. I am sitting right in front of them, and I'm feeling from them that this is really a problem. So um, I hope this Christmas is not so bad. I hope they, 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 um, they certainly get that done. And 
I'm sure that uh, those of you at home will try and ensure that, that you do it as well if you're traveling. That's our program for this week. We talked with Errol Charles, Manager for Customs, and Sion Brown, Group Leader for Customs at the Chedi Chagan International Airport. And this week we looked at the GRA's operations at the airport. We tried to help you understand um, the importance of filling out those forms, the C14 I think it's called, Correct. making sure you fill out your forms so that you can exit the area as quick as possible and you can get to your loved ones. Thanks to our production department at the Ghana Revenue Authority. My name is Juanita Huburn. Thank you for watching our show this week. We'll be back next week at the same time right here. And we're looking forward to your company. So long then.